la luchadores and luchadores welcome to episode five of lucha libre figures and facts joining me today is my co-host and boss fight studio partner and designer eric arana eric how you doing man i'm good i i hope everyone else is good i've been uh prepping for the next episode of our line so I, i've been I got the the next episode's figure spotlight um, in the mail off of a. Uh, I actually bought it off of Mercari, which oh. was the the lowest price I could find on the figure. So I was pretty happy about that. I don't even know what this is, so I'm kind of excited to see what this is <laughs> and hear what this is. So I, I figured I figured we'd say it at the end of the show today. Cool. What the Sounds next figure good. is so. <laughs> and today we are doing something a little bit different. We're than our usual format, I should say. Today, we won't be focusing on just one figure. We're going to be focusing on an entirety of an official AAA line from Kellyon. To help us along our journey is Kellyon collector extraordinaire, Roy Do Lucier, uh, uh, Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'll take it. It is like it's like Lucifer, but no F. Um, <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Roy Lucher. I've been a fan, follower, and aficionado of Lucha Libre since the mid '80s. Uh, really got into it in the early '90s. Started going to live shows all around SoCal. Plus, one thing too is I remember when the AAA Kelly and Line first came out in '94 going to the Los Angeles Sports Arena, seeing the merch stand with them there, traveling to Tijuana to try to get the figures themselves. And I'm one of only a couple people that have the entire line of AAA Kellyan figures mint on card. And there's 12 wow. figures in there. And out of 12 figures, I have 10 of them autographed. So I take this uh, collection line and uh, the, everything very seriously. <laughs> It appears that way. We can see that, man. Yeah, that's, that's a great teaser. Cool. That is a great teaser, but we do need to toss it on over to Denise Salcedo over at the Lucha Central Network. Hey, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of luchacentral.com. Monday. Lucha Libre Figures and Facts returns with a brand new episode. Find the video version of each episode on the Lucha Central YouTube page at luchacentral.com or listen on your favorite podcast platform. On Tuesdays, Mass Mats and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at luchacentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's Wrestle Boss, where Fabi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchador are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed. And please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. We're going to kick off this uh, Q&A with Roy. Uh, well, we wanted to ask you, how did you originally get into Lucha Libre? You mentioned it was back in the 80s. 
Yes. Um, how were you introduced to it? Because uh, in, in the 80s, it was hard to see Lucha Libre in the U.S. Oh, yeah. So I was born and raised in Garden Grove, the next city over from Anaheim. And, you know, my friends and I, we all watch, you know, WWF, NWA, World Class, all the big federations as kids. Well, I just remember on Saturday being home, flipping around the channels, and oh my God, I saw wrestling, but it was in Spanish, but I didn't speak Spanish, but you know, it was just amazing. It was like this whole new world. It was like finding that, that one thing that you know about that nobody else does like this big inside thing. And I just remember, cause I, I didn't know certain times or whatever, but I think in 88, 89, I started watching it more religiously and understanding more about the characters and i would see americans there like fabuloso blondie chris adams was there kevin von eric was there occasionally you know i would know some of the vader you know was down there kamala um and you know a lot of these people that i knew from america and it's like well now i understand why when i didn't see them on tv with wwf or nwa or another federation this is where they went was down to mexico so in 92, I started getting the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and in there, he had a section on Lucha Libre. On top of the Lucha Libre section, he also mentioned in the back, there was a newsletter called Lucha Libre Weekly that was done by Dr. Lucha Steve Sims. So I got the newsletter, and when I got it, I just read it over front, front page to back, and I called up Steve up, and I told him, like, about my, my love and passion for Lucha, and I was only 17 years old. He, we found out I had a satellite dish in my backyard. My parents had that big old, like, 20-foot satellite dish in the backyard. He told me where on the satellite dish to go in order to find, because I was so close to Mexico, that I could get the Lucha promotions on the satellite dish and not oh. just on Galavision for um, Channel 22 in Los Angeles on the regular TV. So from there, I got UWA. So I got to see all the, the big stuff on there. And um, for those who don't know, if you look up like Roy Lucia UWA, you'll actually find a whole entire YouTube channel of complete TV shows that I recorded from the satellite dish uh, oh, wow. from UWA. Same with CMLL. Same with AAA, which came along two months later when Pena took the crew and created AAA. So I started going to the live shows when they were happening in LA. And um, God, that's that was almost 30 years ago. But yeah, I just, Lucha to me is just a passion. It's, it's brought me hundreds of great friends. It's helped me to hablamos uh, español un poco más o menos you know a little there here and there but very good <laughs> yeah you know it, it, it it's introduced me to a whole whole world that I wouldn't have known and I'm trust me not not just for the wrestling side of it but a personal side of it you know Mexican culture is very near and dear to me so I just this is something I'm very you know passionate about and I'm just glad that there is a market out there and I could share my passion with other people who have the same passion whether big like me or or just a passing passion. Roy was there one luchador that you latched on to outside of the americans that were going down there like you said vader was down there and uh kamala so you saw a lot of the awa wwf guys down there was there one who was the luchador that you latched on to probably super astro um i just remember he had this thing that he did during the match where all three of the rudos were in the ring and super astro would be in there and he would escape all three and he would do this little dance to get around all three and then he would pick <laughs> up and the thing is, uh, as he would kick up, all three of the Rudos would kick up. And if you look, the referee would kick up as well with them. <laughs> so I, it was like so amazing. And it wasn't just this little, like, I guess you could call it a comedy spot. Um, it just wasn't that move there. But it was like he, he would do dives out of the ring, you know. Yeah. I, I really didn't get a chance to see dives out of the ring that much other than an occasional sting or great Muda or... Uh, Blue Blazer was around at that time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, that was something that you didn't get to see. So Super Astro, Pirata Morgan, Bestia Savaje, oh, geez, uh, Los Hermanos Dinamita, so especially seeing cars, you know, but definitely Super Astro was like the top name that, you know, I really latched on to. So he was like your Hulk Hogan, huh? Oh, yeah, by far. <laughs> we got to uh, last year in 
uh, Mexico, we did a sh- we, we did a, a uh, booth at a show, and uh, we had Super Astro come and sign because he he's one of the one of the, one of the members of talent that signed to us for an f- upcoming figure, and he's so amazing to talk to and hang out with. He's funny. He's like constantly like making jokes and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And and I'm vegetarian and gluten free. So we kept making jokes about what he would make us make me at his sandwich shop. Like, cause he, <laughs> you know, one of the things he's kind of known for now is that enormous sand cause he owns a sandwich shop in Mexico city and that enormous sandwich. It's, it's funny because super Astro, he's not very tall. He's no five shorter four. than I am. Yeah. I can't, I bought a mask from him. And I can't even fit into it. Like my my head won't fit into his mask, like at all. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's funny that he sells his his shop is known for this enormous giant sandwich, and uh, yeah. and he's like this kind of little dude. I mean, he's in shape. He's still in shape. Like he's in yeah. amazing shape. Great guy though. Yeah, there's two different sandwich shops in Mexico City for the for the watchers out there. There's Torta Super Astro, which is owned by his ex-wife. Yes. And then when he left her, whatever the deal is there, he created El Cuadrilatero de Super Astro. That's the one that he is at. So if you're ever down in Mexico City, you know, just remember there is a difference in the two. Not saying not to go to one and to go to the other. Both are great. But if you're looking to meet Super Astro, you go to the Cuadrilatero. Uh, My last day in Mexico City when I went there in March, I actually took the Uber down there. Other side of Mexico, by the way, and the Uber was only like 11 bucks from where I was out. (laughs) And he was sitting there waiting for me. And the amazing thing was he was watching Twilight when I got there. (laughs) So we had this long talk and I had a bunch of guests from him. And we're just sitting there chilling, watching Twilight. (laughs) And and it's a a really nice sandwich shop too. Like it's gorgeous inside. Like the the decor, the paintings, and and of course the wall of masks that he has yeah. which is just really cool cool to see so mm-hmm. Roy before you got into the Kelly online were you collecting any wrestling figures were you collecting LJN's Galoob's Hasbro's oh, oh yeah oh yeah I'm an old school collector for Christmas 84 I got my dad and mom got me the uh the entire LJN line so Hogan Andre Sheik all those and stuff and mm-hmm. um pl- opened them up and played with them I mean that's what a 10 year old kid does I I you know, look back and I see they're worth 100, 150, a couple hundred bucks. And it's like, well, those things gave me an entire decade of memories playing with them. Yeah. You know, truth be told, I was 20 and still playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I collected all the LJNs uh, all the way up to the Black Card series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to the Hasbros, which came out in 1990. And at that point, I kind of realized there was value to these as I had friends that, you know, we were just, what I did was I was actually starting to meet some of the wrestlers at the time. So I would actually buy the figure and not open it and put it up on my wall. So Mm -hmm. I had, you know, nearly the entire Hasbro line except uh, Dusty, I think. And uh, in 92, when I started going to Lucha shows, in Los Angeles, some of my friends started saying, well, CMLL just came out with a line of figures and they showed them to me. And uh, it's the the official San Francisco toy maker line mm-hmm. over here. It lists 12 figures on the back, but only six got released in the first line. They were going to release a second line. The deal with the CMLL official San Francisco toy maker line was this was the brainchild of Antonio Pena. Pena, instead of wanting the people out front that were um, bootlegging, uh, selling their figures, he decided to come out with his own line of figures, and that's where Vampiro, Ryo, Pierroth, Ultimo Dragon, um, uh, Atlantis, and Rayo de Jalisco are the, the six from that line. There were six more that were supposed to come out, but Pena left to create AAA and um, Paco Alonso didn't care for it whatsoever because he didn't want to battle versus the bootleggers out front. So I got <laughs> all those figures as well. Um, and then, you know, there was really nothing to collect until one day we started seeing commercials on AAA TV for the Kellyan line. Mm-hmm. And um, if, if you Google AAA Kellyan commercials, there's two different ones. There's one where it shows octagon and forza guerrera in the ring battling and then there's another one where conan and cian caris are are, uh, yeah conan and cian caris are battling each other uh, uh, cian caris the conan figures (laughs) 
you know, so, um, you know, and then when we started going to the shows in Los Angeles, and th there is a great story, but I'll tell that another time. Uh, the AAA people would actually have a warehouse where they would leave the figures at, and they would bring eight of the 12 figures and sell them at the shows for $7 a piece. Oh, so man. Could, wow. You could, yeah, you can go to the shows, and um, there's a, a short video on my Twitter page. Bob Barnett took a video and filmed the merchandise stand at a AAA show in Los Angeles, and you can see all the figures there, uh, eight of the 12 figures. Now, for some reason, some of the figures are uh, short run. The Forza Guerrera, Rey Mysterio, uh, Sicosis, and Mascara Sagrada. For some reason, there's less made of those than the others, but mm -hmm. they would bring the eight of the 12 figures and they were selling like hot cakes. You would have people in the Observer and the Reader's page that were like, hey, can you grab me some of those Kellyans? Uh, friends that I know, we would travel to Tijuana and try to find the short run, the short run ones like the Ray and Sikosis and all that. So, oh yeah, I've been a collector going all the way back to 1984 for these figures. So, with the short run figures, were they a wave two, or did they come later than the higher run figures? Now, what we can't figure out on Mascara Sagrada, Ray Mysterio, and Psychosis is the short run why are they a short run why is there less made of these than the others um i've never gotten a definitive answer and the one person who would know better than anybody antonio pena has sadly passed away um the only thing that i have heard and he's not definitive or 100 percent sure on it is that these three figures came out before the other figures and were a limited release and once the uh, demand showed that it was there, the rest were released and mass produced as uh, on the line. Yeah, in, in the in the toy industry, there's two reasons that something gets short run. Sometimes it's the the initial release figures, and your the company is trying to gauge interest and see how much so they may have only run you know 5000 or something like that and then they realized that the, the demand was there so the next set of stuff they they increased the production the other the the other reason is at the tail end of a line of a line's life they sales have been creeping down and that last run the manufacturer will be like nope we're cap it at 2000 or whatever and and that will account for the lower run so it's usually like either the beginning of the run or the end of the run that equates that so it could could be either or, but it could be either one of those but it sounded like they came out first that would make perfect sense that they they were run at a lower amount or it'd be like the mattel retros where the very first series had kevin owens and roman reigns and then still in that first series later on they stopped releasing the kevin owens and roman reigns and threw in the warrior and undertaker yeah so Small there was a, actually i do have a question roy I, i'm a huge ljn fan over here we like my brother and i that's what we grew up on back in 85 the black card series where did you find those Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I actually ordered them in there. <laughs> that was the only way to go. <laughs> yeah, that was the only way we could get them, man. That, that box showed up and boy, it was like Christmas in February or March. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So what was it? Warrior, Andre, uh, uh, Bigelow, Warlord. Warlord, yes. Yeah. yeah. That was the only way to, to get those was because you noticed they weren't in the toy stores at the time and you went nope. and the you know, there, there was nothing wrestling there except those, the WCW line, the Galoob. The Galoob, uh, yeah. Th yeah. Th that was around that time was when the black card came out was the same thing. But, you know, you, you can make the WCW ones fight the WWF ones because of the size difference and stuff yep. like that. That's like that, that Bundy one, you could break a window. Through <laughs> <laughs> My brother and I always joke around. You can concuss your little brother with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, now is that no, joke I, is that joke from a life experience between you and scott uh, uh, we'll leave that to the other show that's okay. uh <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it might or might not have happened. We'll, uh, we'll leave that for a later date. <laughs> now, Roy, how did you go about getting these figures? Because, well, you said you, you would go to the shows and they would have them there. Was there another way? Did you have friends down in Tijuana that would bring them up? Or Well, I'll, I'll be frank and honest. Uh, Ron Rivera, Red Pro. Uh, oh, yeah. Go, yeah, he used to go down to Tijuana and um, he would go to the – uh, the drug stores and the toy stores when he was down there, bringing friends down there. And he would let some of the people in the area know, hey, I actually found the Cicosis. I actually found the Ray. I found the Sagrada. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he would sell them for a little bit of an upkeep to pay for his, his trip and all that. And that wasn't a problem. I believe, um, believe it or not, this is not the only Cicosis that I own. I actually have another <laughs> one at my... Um, mother's house in Lake Havasu. I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. But, uh, you know, you, you would find some people here and there who were selling them, but it, w- it was well known even back then. There was like these, th- the three really hard ones to find, and it was just few and far between. Uh, but it was either you would hear people were going to Mexico and getting them. There was also a Japanese superstore, the predecessor to Tutacan as well, they have the WCW UK figures. Oh, whoa. And I always heard from some people in the Observer that I talked to that uh, were into Lucha that if you contacted them occasionally, they would get some of the Kellyan figures in stock as well. So um, if you look in the Japanese magazines in the mid-90s, you'll see this advertisement. For, it has the Road Warriors with Zubas and then some shirts of the wrestlers. But in the corner, you'll start seeing some... Uh, WCW UK figures, Hasbro green card figures, stuff like that. And then you would see some of the AAA figures as well. So you would just give them a call long distance and, you know, like, hey, you can get this in. And number one, hope you spoke to someone that spoke English, you know, because there was no email back then. Or at right. least the public access, you know, how to do it. But um, it, it, was, it was not as easy as it was nowadays. Nowadays, not saying these three are easy to find because this is like in the past uh, three, four, five years on eBay, I think Ray's only gone up for sale twice. Mosca Sagrada, maybe twice. Seacoast, three or four times. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they are very rare to find. Did Kellyan only do those, those that scale figure? Yes. There they, they, yeah. they wasn't a Kellyan smaller didn't or anything? With, uh, well, okay. Um, I mean, I can actually take this off considering it's just Gorilla Glue. A lot of people think that these are Kelly and these are oh. actually Ricolini. This is a okay. Kelly line. So there's 20 figures here of Ricolini figures that came out uh, a year later in 1995. And some of the figures are the same. For example, you got Ray, Sicosi, Sagrada, but you also have Juventude Guerrera. <laughs> oh, those are cool. Those yeah, are really I mean, nice. You have, uh, oh, here's someone you guys are familiar with, Solar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Another great yeah, guy. So, him him yeah, and his son so both. Absolutely. So, um, Ricolini came out a year later. Uh, what it was, was they were inserted in a little bag inside of, uh, two inside of a thing of candy. So, oh, you weird. would buy the candy and you would get two figures inside of it. That's okay. And the <laughs> I love toys Italian, and candy. The weird thing about Kellyan is uh, Kellyan, they only existed to create those Lucha figures. I mean, there's nothing else Kellyan, like they didn't make G.I. Joe toys, Barbies, any other line really? of anything else. Kellyan existed for that one purpose, and that was to um, make those Lucha figures. Like, if you look at the address on the back of here, I've had people look up like the history of it and the the what what is this address and all that. Nowadays, it's some kind of like corporate um, headquarters. Uh, I don't want to say Taco Bell, but some kind of Mexican restaurant that's like a mainstream restaurant or something. But uh, Kelly and did nothing else ever. They only existed to make these figures, and that's it. So growing up with the LJNs, the the fact that there was no articulation to them really didn't matter to you, huh? Uh, none whatsoever. I, I actually, um, in my head, when I played with the LJNs, they weren't, um, in my head, I, they weren't Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, big, 
you know, big boss man to me. I actually created my own wrestling federation and gave them different names. So that, that solved why Bobby Heenan was actually a wrestler because it, it was actually like based on me and, you know, <laughs> the wrestling Andre or whatever name I gave the Andre figure or whatever. So the articulation, the thumbs and like, I, like the Heenan was like Rob Van Dam with the thumbs. Thing <laughs> yep. <correctly, you> know? <laughs> so I've told the story before uh, when I worked for all pro wrestling back in the day, there was a wrestler there. His name was Donovan Morgan. Remember and him. Yeah, yeah. Great wrestler. Him and Modest used to team up for Pro Wrestling Iron, too. The great, great guys. Anyways, so Donovan lived upstairs along with Modest. Modest had another section of the warehouse or the APW garage. But when you walked up the stairs, the first room that was directly in front of you was Donovan's. Underneath his TV was a huge box of LJNs. Well, I would talk to Donovan. I'd be like, oh, dude, you got LJNs right there. This is awesome. And so we had to talk figures and he goes, yeah, what I do is he goes, I'll practice some moves and then I'll go down into the ring that was in the garage. And he goes, I would practice to see if the move would work. And I was like, wait, with LJNs, there's no articulation. How would you do that? He goes, I would just, I would just do it. <laughs> he goes, see if it worked <laughs> like springboards or something. Did you hear the, the thing with the guys from dark side of the ring? You know, those little like silhouette things they would have in between. Yeah. Yep. Actually like before that using figures to, to create that, to make sure like that they could do it or to uh, <laughs> get, get a, a mindset to have uh, the, the Brody latching on to Abdul or whatever. And they would have the AWA figures like latching yep. onto each other first to, <laughs> Uh, show the actors that were playing them this is what we're hoping to get out of this or whatever yep <laughs> that's because I, I eric i know that you're a huge proponent of articulation uh, so yeah, i know I'm, that i know that the killian kills you that there's no articulation or it, it LJN. does, <laughs> it does. I, I mean i still love them as like a toy history thing yeah, they but, don't move whatsoever. Yeah. The legs don't move. What's weird are these little stands, by the way. Yes. These things are cool. Yeah, know? they're really cool. Um, I, I I only own one Kellyan figure, and that's Laparka, which w the last episode we, we did was about that figure. Um, I didn't open him because it, he's on the card and it's gorgeous, and I, I really lo I love the card, and uh, I I kind of want to track down a uh, Conan as well because I love Conan too, and what yeah but like we were just saying i'm i am like an articulation guy when it comes to figures i, I want really good like hyper real sculpts and i want articulation and all that stuff but i'm a toy guy in gen general i don't only collect uh lucha and wrestling figures i collect aquaman figures and gi joe and transformers and like oh i'm all i'm kind of all over the place so <laughs> but with uh how many figures did you say were in the kelly in line 12 12 who were who were they okay so we got Rey Mysterio Jr., Sikosis, Paraguayo, Sian Caras, Heavy Metal, La Parca, Fuerza Guerrero, Mosca Sagrada, Blue Panther, Conan, Elijo de Santo, and Octagon. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's a solid lineup of <laughs> luchadors. That's great. I'd really like to know how they came upon these 12, especially when, you know, like, why settle on 12? Why not go 16? Why not 8? You know, and... There was other guys they could have made, I really believe, like 94, Pimpinella Scarlatta was hot. I mean, literally, yeah. in, uh, he, he was uh, winning, he won a major title, they were, they could have made a figure of him at the time. You also had Super Calo and Winners, Volador, Mysterioso, um, why was there no Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero figures? Uh, yeah. all, I, all I could do, they were the hottest faction right at that time the los gringos locos thing the only thing i can think of was they decided like i mean you could have a rudo figure like a cian Caras or a um Ferza guerrera but you couldn't have the mexican hating heel figures like uh love machine and eddie guerrero that was the only yeah. thing i could think of why those didn't come out because they were literally the hottest act in the in the company at the time. Was there one figure that was super hard for you to get? Like you had to track down, took you years, maybe months or whatever it was? Uh, yeah, Ray. <laughs> that Ray is Make, uh, makes sense. <laughs> hard to get. Ray, you know, I, I caught this on eBay uh, about three years, I want to say two, three years ago. And the deal with it is, 
uh, it was a German eBay seller who put up Ray, Sagrada, and Psychosis all at the same time. Oh. I did a normal eBay search and didn't see anything. Uh, I did a Google search on the Ray figure, and this German eBay seller's auction came up with the Ray and the Mosca Sagrada. With the opening bid being 225 euros, $200 each, with the auction ending in seven hours at 5 a.m. Literally, here's what I did. I set my alarm for 4.30 in the morning, set an opening bid of $200. I think I put it up to 350 and I was just willing, ready to outbid anyone who touched me. Lo and behold, <laughs> nobody else saw the auction, and I got them for $200 each, and I'm just like, this, this has got to be the luckiest day of my life. Oh. And I, I told um, Ray about it. And uh, I got Ray to sign it. He signed the back of the figure in Stockton, California in December 2018. He also signed the front of the figure. And from what Ray told me, uh, he doesn't even have one in the package. And he he's almost sure that he's never signed one on the figure before. Oh, wow. So, yeah, That's really so cool. That, to me, that this is why this is a, a one-of-a-kind collection, not just for the Ray alone, but the other ones. Every single one of these is personally autographed from either driving to uh, San Francisco for Pro Wrestling Revolution to meet one of the luchadors, flying to Mexico City for heavy metal. I actually went down there, brought the figures, brought extra figures to give him because he didn't have any because um, – you know, he, he, his daughters were with him, like, you know, two and six, and his daughters didn't even realize he had a, had a figure made. And I remember handing it, the figure, extra figure to him, and he was, like, in tears, and he handed it to his uh, daughter. And he goes, hija, ¿quién es? And his daughter, like, lit up, it's me, papa. <laughs> it made the whole trip worth it for that. So, but every single one of these is personally autographed. But out of all these, the Ray was definitely the – hardest to get and Sagrada got in the same auction by the way beautiful one and the deal is he worked a show uh October of last year in San Jose that unfortunately I couldn't go to because I had tickets to a music festival in Sacramento mm -hmm. so I contacted him and what he said was well if you could give me a ride to my hotel I'll sign the figure for you so what I did was I drove out to San Jose he invited me to his hotel room he signed the figure, and uh, we went out to breakfast at Denny's and talked for like five hours. And my Spanish isn't isn't perfect. It's, it's muy bien, pero no es perfecto. <laughs> and um, I mean, we just we had a blast, and he, he's a great guy. So with that Ray, I got the Sagrada. So to me, they're 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 really like equal as far as like the cornerstones of of my collection. But definitely the Ray. That's the one that if you look back in the observers in the mid '90s when Meltzer had the readers page, you'll see. Roy Lusher of 14322 Harrington Street and Garden Grove is looking for the Ray Mysterio Jr. Kelly and figures. So when I finally got that, it was, you know. Well, let's not give out anybody's address here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's funny that you mentioned that like Ray and, and uh, the other guys like didn't have them. Uh, we're finding out that that's uh, really common in talking to Vampiro. It, a couple episodes ago it sounded like he didn't have any of the wcw figures i think it i think it was uh conan said he only has one of the wcw figures like in his house somewhere or something like that like and then you'll you'll also hear stories about some of the current wwe stars where they they get the comp box from mattel and some of them just throw it away like they don't even care <laughs> it's just, yeah. like that's crazy but like you know, whereas like a lot of the newer stars coming up, like that's a goalpost is to get a figure made of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Roy, you were holding up the figures inside that case. What is that case that you have them in protected in? I had these in like these like plastic things that I got from I think Wrestling Superstore. So what I did was I just said to hell with it. And I heard about this museum quality casing company called Collectors Archive Services out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. so I contacted them and I saw they did amazing work. They do grading as well, but I, I, it's like, I'm not reselling these, so I don't care about the grading, but they do do grading for those who wonder. So what they do is they uh, seal the figure so it will not move whatsoever. 
keep it in here. It's it's in a museum quality casing that uh, it's UV light, so the sunlight coming through the window can't destroy the figure whatsoever. That's, That's real fantastic. important. That's, That's like, great. Yeah, I got all 10 of my autograph figures inside of these museum quality casings. I think it was around 55 to 70 a figure, but if you're serious into this and you know this is a lifetime investment for me you know this this is something i take very seriously it's 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 well worth it to me which are the two that you don't have signed uh pero guayo uh that's unfortunate yeah i i i've been contacted by somebody in mexico who has an aguayo signed uh, but he told me it's not for sale, but I mean, it's beat up. I mean, it's uh, increased all that. And, ugh. you know, I think that's probably going to be the one that's going to be the toughest just to, you know, number one, find number two, authenticated as well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and seeing Karis, uh, when I was in Mexico in March, um, Solar, he, um, actually, I contacted him and he actually is a favor to me was going to bring in seeing Karis. We were going to go to breakfast and he was going to sign the figure uh, for me, so that way I had 11 or 12 done. Well, come Tuesday morning, what day was it? Like the March 17th or whatever, he contacted me and said, you know, because of the COVID stuff, we, we got to shut down and we can't run the show and it's been canceled. So <laughs> at that point, my whole vacation was like, ah, I'm done. Yeah. So I actually flew back home at that point because, you know, we started hearing about the toilet paper issues and <laughs> all the weird stuff going on and, you know, my... My son was was here alone and my mother-in-law, so we just like said the heck with it and got on the plane and come back. But seeing Carson and I have chatted and whenever we revisit Mexico City, whenever things are normal, uh, we will definitely be meeting up and I'll get the other one signed. That's cool. Is there one luchador or luchadora that you have to have? Like you see their figures and you're like, yeah, I got to get it. You know what? Any Any line that really makes luchadors to me. It, you know, nowadays, you know, I get it. The the the, the focus usually is WWE or mm -hmm. or AEW. You know, but it's so focused on WWE or X WWE stars or whatever. If I go inside of a store and I see a Callisto or a Ray or um, somebody that's got history where their career was based out of lucha, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll be getting it because I really love and support. The, the figures that are made of luchadors and luchadoras. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, almost, almost anybody get the, the, the problem. And this is why I'm glad Bo Boss Fight exists. And I'm looking forward to the Penn and Phoenix line is we really need more figures and representation of the luchadors out there. Well, thank you. We're, we're really excited about it. We'll, we'll have a Boss Fight minute at, at the end of the show to talking about some stuff, but you know, we're, we're really trying to kind of celebrate and, and pull in the entire, like the culture and everything that talk about the masks and the history of like doing Conan in his mask for the first time is, is really exciting. And it doesn't mean we won't do late, you know, later versions of Conan as well, but we wanted to kick off with him in his mask and Penta and Phoenix are kind of the cornerstone of our line, you know, for obvious reasons. Like, <laughs> you know, it's crazy to me how far we've come with Conan's career is I saw a two and a half hour interview with him the other day and the whole thing was about his, his WCW stuff. And I yeah. get it. The average fan that watches is going to remember Conan from that time frame. What they don't remember or know the majority, I'm not going to say all of them, but the majority of them is he was actually in WCW at Starcade 1990. Yeah, with the mask. Stereo. Yeah, he was mask in the tag team tournament. The the World Tag Team Tournament. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you had that, and then you had the CMLL run. Uh, he tra he wrestled in Puerto Rico as well. Um, and then when AAA started, you know, there, there's a funny story. Apparently, he was one of the the few that, or one of the bunch that left with uh, Antonio Pena to create AAA, and I guess he forgot to grab his working papers and Paco Alonso like saw them on his table and someone came in and goes, Antonio Pena just had a press conference and he's taking all these wrestlers with them. And I guess uh, Paco said, well, that's funny. I got Conan's paperwork right here. So he, <laughs> could wrestle for, he couldn't wrestle for Pena for 30 days when the promotion started. But basically Conan was the Hulk Hogan of AAA yeah. when that promotion first started. 
He what every he was main eventing every night, and when he joined Los Gringos Locos, uh, Mexican fans looked at it as like you turned not just on luchadors, you turned on Mexico, and that was such a hot run that he had with them, and brought a lot of like not just fighting the Paraguayos, but the Cien Caras, so he's fighting Technicos and Rudos, and then when Eddie's passing, they turned him back and. You know, at that point, you know, the WCW came along, but that run he had in AAA from 92 to, you know, late 95 was just so amazing. And, you know, the, the mass stuff as well, it's glad to hear that there's a mass Conan coming out. Yeah. I was just reading um, that when he first came to WCW, uh, there was supposed to be a feud between him and Hogan and something yeah. stopped it. But even Conan, Conan kind of didn't, wasn't sure exactly what stop that he kind of seemed to think it was because he um there is a di- difference between american and mexican wrestling in in the direction that they work and stuff well, and conan is right yeah, yeah and conan still had to kind of get that down um so they kind of that's what he thinks canceled it but he was wasn't sure yeah, because Hogan's worked Mexico before. If yeah. you look in 83 and 84, Hogan did multiple tours of El Torreo, mm-hmm. uh, fighting on the top and teaming and with and against Kinect. There's a famous match, September of 84, where Hogan, uh, as WWF champion, defended the title against UWA champion El Kinect in a two out of three fall match that, you know, because the title was on the line and you can't have Kinect lose, it went to a double yeah. BQ, but... Hogan definitely had history in Mexico yep. and not just because of the movies and stuff like that. The Mexican fans were well aware of who Hogan was. There's yeah. even a um, cover of in 83 of one of the Lucha magazines, maybe Boxy Lucha or the other one is just Lucha Libre, where it's got Hogan posing and the exotico Rudy Reina, like grabbing his arms yeah. and looking up in, in lust. So yeah, Hogan's I love the definitely got a history in Mexico feud between between Conan and Hogan would have been amazing at WCW. It just would have been so much, so much fun. There's a press photo of Hogan and yep. Conan with the title belt. And yeah. they're like you know, grabbing it and stuff, you know? Almost like a kiss of death, by the way, that, that press conferencing. Because remember, there was the Hogan and Brett holding yep. the, the yes. title belt. <laughs> yep. The feud never happened. So then yeah. you got Hogan and Conan, and that feud yep. never happened either. Roy, quick question. Um, Jumping over to prototypes, do, does anybody have the prototypes of the Kellyon figures? Are there anything out there? Was there supposed to be a Wave 2 that was going to have another set of 12 figures or anything like that? The only one that I would know that would, know that would be Antonio Pena. I, I've searched far and few and far between. I've never seen prototypes for any of the Lucha figures whatsoever. Mm-hmm. If you look on the 1992 commercial for the CMLL line of figures, mm-hmm. in the commercial, you'll see prototypes for Sangre Chicana and Pirata Morgan in the commercial, and those never come out. And I remember Pirata Morgan worked a show in Fairfield, uh, October of last year, and oh. I actually showed him the commercial, and I asked him about it, and he's like, yeah, I've never seen that figure, and I don't know anything about it. So I'd love to know, not just the Kelly, but those CMLO ones, by the way, because there's actual proof there that prototypes exist. Mm-hmm. So, That's interesting. Yeah. Was there supposed to be a wave two or anything like that? Or was it just the first wave that came out and then that was it? The first set of 12? Just the first set of 12. I believe the the biggest issue was a lot of the wrestlers were really upset by the line. Octagon told me he never got paid for the figure. So uh, it, it seems to be common. Same with uh, Sikosis, by the way, Nicho. Because mm-hmm. I asked him about it because uh, he was asking me how much I paid for the figure. And to be very, very honest with you, paid $480 for this figure. <laughs> and he's like, that's more than I got paid for the figure. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, none of these guys got paid for the figure. So I think if they had done a wave two, a lot of the wrestlers, you know, word started getting around the locker room that, hey, we're not getting paid for this. So mm-hmm. there, there might have been some kind of um, uproar, a revolt. I, I really don't know the specifics, but I've been told by multiple wrestlers they didn't get paid for it. So maybe to avoid an issue, uh, that's why they didn't do a wave two. But I would have loved to see in a wave two with Hooventude, Eddie, Psych- um, a Love Machine, uh, Super mm-hmm. Callow, Winners, who, uh, you know, so many. 
So I'm looking behind you and I see FTC, I see some ECW figures. What's your collection like today? What what are you going after? Is it just mainly luchadors or do you? Only lucha in Japan, you know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's a store in Japan called uh, Tudicon. Yep. And, uh, you know, you go on eBay and you look at these figures and I get it. They're, they're playing middleman. They've got them from somewhere else and they're trying to make a buck off of them. Tudicon, mm-hmm. I just spent like 550 bucks and I got like 20 figures from, from Japan. So my, what I do is a couple times a week, I'll actually open up a figure. Uh, you know, these things are mass produced. I mean, if I'm not going to open up a Kelly or, or you know what? I actually got some tellings that I am going to open up. I mean, I got them for, you know, pretty, pretty dirt cheap. So I do open some of the figures up nowadays, just not the autograph ones or the best condition one uh, from the Kelly in line, but I just have fun. It's, it's, you know, time for my wife and I to, you know, we, we have fun filming the videos and I put the figures up, do a little quick history lesson on the line of figure or the wrestler themselves Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. It's just Japan luchadors, or if they have some kind of like Japan or, or lucha connection, like you know, Freddie Blassie worked in Japan against Ricky Dozan and, and married a Japanese woman. So I'll buy a Freddie Blassie figure and open it up and do a uh, history lesson about his his history in Japan. As passionate as I am about it, that's fantastic, man. That's cool. <laughs> You're killing me by opening up the figures, but that's fantastic. <laughs> Not me. I love opening figures. Yeah, if, if, if you're ever looking for a specific figure, Jeffrey, just let me know and I, I can do what I can to get, get you. It. <laughs> we're, we're only about an hour, hour 15 apart. So. <laughs> so before we go any further, we do have an ad break for LuchaMasks.com. Lucha-masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., the Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to lucha-masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. Now it's time for our, uh, kind of a new segment. We're just kind of uh, trying to tag this in. Uh, that's the boss fight break. Every episode, I'll kind of update a little bit on where we are in the boss fight Lucha, Legends of Lucha Libre line and, and the, the multiple lines within that because it, it's not just the premium figures. But um, the biggest question I've been getting lately is uh, where are my Legends of Lucha Libre figures? And I just want to say, uh, first of all, stop asking. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> we are really feel Eric. <laughs> yeah, really. We, we really are working hard um, to get them out. No, no one wants Penta, Penta Zero M and, and Ray Phoenix more than I do. I, I, they're two of my all time favorites, um, considering they've, you know, are newer and, and I, I like them that much. And um, we were on schedule to release in mid-August originally, but, you know, of course, the three to four month delay caused by the redacted C word. Um, (laughs) And uh, our original release date uh, obviously has been missed, but we are about three to four months behind exactly. So we we are um, working on them. I'm actually today going to be working with the factory via phone on the deco samples so i i actually uh that's where we um basically go through there's these pantone books i'll hold up here with all these colors and that's how we pick uh plastic colors and paint colors and everything in the factory and so i'll I'll actually be looking at the paint masters and double checking some of the colors and stuff like that uh via phone hopefully we'll have samples of the paint masters in hand in the next 30 days ish and once that stage is approved production usually goes pretty quickly actually the production part is is usually the slowest part it's the tooling the fine tuning of the tooling and articulation and the parts it, that's all the parts that take the longest so the, you know n- next month there's a great event coming up 
involving Expo Lucha. I'm not sure exact. I, I don't exactly want to say what it is because Expo Lucha, of course, was canceled this year and moved to next summer. Yeah, re, re, I was really bummed because it's only a couple hours away for us. And um, we were planning to have this big booth and all this product and stuff. Now we will, we still will, but it won't be until next summer. And um, we were going to do a panel together. Yes, we yeah we we were going to do a panel about figures, and I think uh, we we were going to judge a um, custom contest. Yeah, and stuff like Ooh. that. So it it was going to be a lot of fun, and oh, hopefully all that stuff will still be happening. But we're going to have some cool news uh, coming up next month about the mystery mascaras, the premium figures, and the Fanaticos figures. Um, we'll probably be uh, announcing Wave 2 of Fanaticos, which is going to get people very, very excited. It, it's, there's some great, great talent in Wave 2, and and I think people are going to be really excited about it. Oh, you're not going to announce it on the show? No, we, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to be announcing it then and uh, in concert with... Uh, with uh, Mass Republic, but it's got sort of some great, great talent. It's it's really, I was very excited when we landed on the lineup. Like I was super excited to do all the, to do all the work and the drawings and everything. So it sucks that everybody's impatient right now regarding the figures because it, I mean, I was, as I always say, you guys, meaning Boss Fight, Super 7, it's like a mom and pop shop. Yeah you know, Mattel and Hasbro can pump out figures like that, you know, they can pump out, you know, start up the machines and even they were affected by what's going on. You know, yeah. I don't, every commercial says unprecedented times, you know, yeah, yeah. but I, it's a smaller run, you know, every, it, it, you will get your figure. I mean, it's not like, I just got told the other day that Super 7's New Japan figures are, are not going to be in my hands until March of next year. Yeah, yeah, they, they they had a big pushback. Everyone has, but the smaller companies are having larger pushbacks than mm -hmm. than we are. And I, you know, the Super 7 product is amazing, and those guys over at Super 7 are great. We we love that company. Mm -hmm. But and um, we I mean, keep in mind though you know boss fight studio is only nine people there's only nine of us yep so we're and we work on multiple multiple lines our both our own and our our licenses and our legends of lucha line is kind of a map it's more 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 of what's considered a master license where with phantom and flash flash gordon we only have like the rights to do specific uh, segments of those brands with Legends of Lucha Libre, we're kind of doing anything and everything. Like, mm -hmm. so currently, you know, we've got the mini mascaras, uh, we have mini figures coming out, uh, the Luchacitos. We've got uh, the premium line, which is what Penta and Phoenix are from. We have the uh, Fanaticos line, which is a more stripped down basic uh, series. It's a little less less ex less expensive than the premium, but the same same scale and detail um we're looking at doing a ring i i really want to venture into role play masks for kids and stuff like that so it, it, the lucha line is actually big and it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of product so i and, and i don't only manage that line i also manage phantom zorro tarzan and vitruvian hacks so it's it there there's a lot of work <laughs> yeah oh uh, roy are you Boss Fight's coming out with some mini masks and they actually come with like a bust and you put the mask, like a cloth mask on them. Are you going to be getting those? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Their prototypes are being painted right now and mm -hmm. they look amazing. And uh, just to be clear, the, the mask, the little mask is a cloth. It's soft plastic. So, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's soft PVC. So it'll kind of like wrap around the, the, the bust that comes with them. Uh, there'll be variants in the case. So what it is, is there's two decos for each mask. There's 18 pieces in a PDQ. Mm -hmm. And so there's two of each of deco one, and then there's one of each of deco two. So there's, there are like chases and they're blind boxed. But if you, if you order a full PDQ, it, you'll get one of everything like it, it will be two of one and one of the other but you'll have a full set so we yeah, are nice. you know 
that's kind of how we do all of, no, excuse me. That's kind of how we do all of our PDQs with, if you buy the PDQ, you'll get everything. You don't have to just, there, there's, there's not like one in 50. It's one in three, everything, you know, like it's not, <laughs> we're, we're not going to drive everybody cra crazy, but the mini mascotas is a, uh, the mystery mascot, sorry, is a, uh, what I think it might be, it be the line that I uh, am most excited about because they 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 just look so good. Yeah, Roy, how stoked were you that you heard Boss Fight was doing a Legends of Lucha Libre line? Huge, because we other than you know the occasional Hasbro, we're, we're, there's Lucha's not represented. I mean, Lucha Underground mm -hmm. had such an opportunity to make figures for the boys and the ladies, and and never 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 came about and you know what uh, what tna had a shark boy figure that's the only mass figure i can think of you know <laughs> they, they had a conan uh, uh bg james two pack or whatever but lucha has been so unrepresented since the kelly in line mm -hmm. so when i was at uh expo lucha last year and i heard about the boss fight figures and um you know, I've known Penn and Phoenix for some time, and when I saw their face, when they saw the figures for the first time, it was like, wow. You know, that was <laughs> really, you know, seeing them light up over it, you know, it's, it's like just get, getting the uh, the word out there now is it. And as many of us know in the in the action figure wrestling industry, uh, Matt Cardona and, Matt, and Brian Myers had that major wrestling figure podcast, and they have such a, a great market, and they're able to get, the word out about figures and it's spinning off other shows and there were shows that came out before them too as far as wrestling action figures whatever mm -hmm. and it's just getting the public to know that these figures exist and you know how to get them and when they'll be out and stuff like that and also not just that there's going to be you know Penn and, and Phoenix figures but the other ones and the history behind them as well I really believe each figure should have a history lesson on them like if you come out with a Taya figure list on there like the whole Paris de Mall she was the only oh, yeah. female member of Paris de Mall you know that that would be a great little trivia thing to put on there or you know a lot of people a lot of people don't even know Conan wore a mask early yeah. in his career mm -hmm. and, you know, putting on there like he wore a mask from here until he lost it to Paraguayo, or you know, just just the history, not just getting the lucha figures out, but explaining a little about the history of lucha libre with each figure as well. I believe is you know. Well, I, I I will say that, that uh, it, any fans out there of uh, Pedro Stomal, um, get, you'll be very happy c coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Spoiler alert. As am I. <laughs> I got a quick question for you if that's cool to ask. Yeah, yeah. Um, without spoiling anything, uh, with your, um, I mean, you, you've been a fan of Lucha for some time, correct? Yes. Okay, like if if uh, the money wasn't a factor, who would you try to get into the line without spoiling anything? It would probably be Blue Demon would be the one and cur currently he's connected with that new Disney show coming up. So he's kind of off the table completely right now. And that's kind of a bummer. And we, uh, I would really love to do blue, to do a blue demon figure. Nice. And Roy, going back to earlier, uh, Mast Republic actually had a deal where they were going to be doing uh, Lucha Underground figures before they folded. Yeah. So Master Republic and Lucha Underground were actually this close to getting yeah, figures, man. Oh I know. We would have had the, um, oh, who's Ricochet's character? Oh, uh, uh, Prince Puma? Yeah, Prince, Prince Puma, Puma, thank you. I mean, we would have had that. We would have had Mil Mas, uh, not Mil uh, Muertes. Like Mil Muertes. <sighs> oh, oh, just thinking about it, it was just, been, uh. <laughs> what, what One of the yeah. things that has me really excited um, with the AEW line, actually, um, one, their figures are amazing. Like, they're so good. And two, so many of the Lucha Underground talent is now at AEW with, mm -hmm. you know, Luchasaurus, Penta, Phoenix, um, Sunny Kiss. And like, it's, it's just such a, I'm going to buy like Sammy Guevara. I only buy Luchadors, but look, I'm going to buy those Lucha Underground characters because they're, they were such a big part of that. 
Roy, do you also collect uh, like Super 7's coming out with in Wave 2, they're coming out with LIJ, they're coming out with Evil, Naito. Um, are you going to collect like those also, Naito and... To be honest with you, with my, my Lucha thing, I'm, I've been really following that. I haven't been as, as close to the Super 7 New Japans as I, as I should be, mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely want to look at them. I like the Super 7s that came out, I believe it's Super 7s, with uh, Tina Bloss, Solar Blue Demon, the ones with the the suit. Oh, the, yeah, the the five point ones. The, yeah, the little five point ones. I mean, th those were really interesting. I remember yeah. going to San Francisco. Um, Sam Adonis. Uh, I picked him up for a um, APW show, and mm -hmm. we went to the store and because he was like, "Hey, I heard this place has uh, the Super Seven figures," and it was like you know, like buy four get the fifth free or something like that. So I mean, we. We went there, and I, I like these figures, and they're fun to get signed, and, you know, the boys light up when, when they see people having them and stuff like that. So um, I like what I've seen from, from Super 7 so far. I don't know if there's a difference in the size from the New Japan ones versus these, um, the no, Lucha the, ones. The, the New Japan ones that are coming from Super 7 are 6-inch fully oh, wow. posable, like yeah. tons of accessories, extra heads, uh, like belts, all sorts of stuff. They're really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check them out. But I'll be honest with you, I haven't kept up on it as much as I know I should have been. Because a lot of New Japan guys, when they do their excursions, they will go to Mexico yeah. or wherever they may be. So I was wondering if maybe guys that ventured over to Mexico, be it Naito, if you have to like have his figure as well. Oh, yeah. Like... um New Japan and CMLL have a working agreement, and mm -hmm. whenever a New Japan talent like Kawato or, uh, you know, they, there's a young boy that they want to have them learn uh, a different style and, and, you know, be away from the company for a bit so when they bring them back that they're, they can turn them into a new character, like, for example... Um, Watanabe went to America and Mexico, and then came back as evil. Yep. Or, yeah. Jay White went to ROH, uh, some yep. other places, and then came back and he was Switchblade. Uh, Naito went there. I, I just, you know, it's part of a working agreement or whatever, and uh, got teamed up with R Roosh, and oh my God, just it just lit a fire underneath him, and that was the best thing ever for his career. Because I was just about to say that. That was the greatest thing. I couldn't stand Naito, and then he comes back from yeah. his excursion, and I'm like, Oh my God, this guy is great. <laughs> he did like Xena Roman Reigns heat when he won the IWGP title for the first yes. time. Yes. <laughs> booing the hell out of him. So, so that, that definitely uh, was the best thing ever for his career was, was going to Mexico. And, you know, him and Roosh are like that, you know, mm -hmm. in real life and stuff, you know. And if you ever meet Naito, by the way, his Spanish is dead on because he speaks no English. I speak no Japanese. But we both speak Spanish. When I met him at a Treasure Island a couple of years ago, when they were doing that meet and greet there, that killed me. The whole time, you know? <laughs> that killed me. I couldn't go to that. I wanted to so bad. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, that was a great time. <laughs> yeah, I had one last question for you, Roy, and that was this. First, I want to say that I, well, the first time I met Penta and Phoenix, I was very intimidated legitimately intimidated by Penta because of his character. And he's so good at his character. He's actually, I, I found him actually scary until I met him. And then he's, he's amazing. Like him and Ray are both fantastic. Like the two of the greatest people I've ever met. Um, that said, at Expo Lucha, you almost got into a fight with Penta Oh, yeah. <laughs> he where he actually jumped out of the ring, <laughs> it, and with that, I can't imagine that I wouldn't crap myself if he came <laughs> running at me, even knowing that he's like, he, I, he, like he's a great guy. Like Wait, I still, is this straight shooter? Or is this a work? Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, that funny story that I wanted to tell from earlier. Let me tell it real quickly. So November 1993, I'm at the LA Sports Arena. Uh, 16,000 Mexican fans inside of the building. I could probably count how many white people are on both my hands. So I'm running around the building with a sign, and I'm 18 years old at the time. I'm running around the building with a sign that says, 100% rudos, 100% rudos. 
Well, the fans got sick of it and started throwing dirty diapers, um, uh, cups of hot dog, mustard, drinks, all kinds of me. And the thing is, Melcher was in attendance. So when he did his observer report that week, he said the fans were pretty respectful except for pummeling Roy Lusher. So <laughs> at that point, it started to become like fandom, like, hey, there's this white guy named Roy Lucia that goes to Lucha shows and gets kicked out. And I remember going to Vegas for uh, NWC shows uh, and like fans there were like, hey, I heard about you from the Observer and stuff like that. So I, I started getting this reputation as like this rambunctious white fan that would, you know, do crazy things at Lucha shows. <laughs> uh, flash forward to 2018 and I've known Juventud Guerrero for some time, and the main event for that evening was Ray, um, Penn and Phoenix against the Mexicals. And the whole crowd was cheering <laughs> for Penta, you know, um, Cerro M. And I, I was the only one, Juventud, Cerro M. Juventud. <laughs> and I was so loud, and I was the only one doing it. Penta slides out of the ring and gets in my face. <laughs> Come on, I've been in this business for so long, I know he's not legitimately going to do anything to me. So I rip my shirt off and start doing Hogan posing <laughs> while, while Hoovy gets in our way and does that, like, to protect me. It's funny because on the professional commentary, Vampiro is like, oh, my God, that guy's wife is, like, scooting away as far as she can. <laughs> And stuff like that. So I mean, it, it was you know, I, I've seen Penna multiple times after, and we were just having fun. And if you look at the corner of the camera, you can see like Ray just losing it. And yeah, stuff like that. The, so. the video is hilarious, and and of course, it's that was a uh, Vampiro and um, Dom, Joseph Dombrowski. Yeah, and they, they you know, Vampiro is always on point on when he's doing a commentary. So it, it's just. <laughs> amazing it's on youtube you guys gotta find it it's hilarious <laughs> so when apw was at the cow palace they did that same match it was no, uh they did ray and hoovy against penna and phoenix was the main event for that night and my god just oh hoovy was on point that night that was an amazing match Hoovy's, at the cow palace yes hoovy yeah. can still fly he's yeah. still the best and that, that guy is amazing it, and he's a super great guy to, to sit and talk with. Like, he's great. Yeah, you know, and, and similar to myself, Uvi had many problems decades ago and stuff like that. And he's not ashamed to say, hey, listen, I'm not the same person I was. I'm yeah. different now. I've learned from my mistakes. Uvi's grown up and, uh, you know, changed and he's a different person. But he's still got that, like, you know, kid and and yeah. fun and stuff like that. And that's one thing I love about the guy. You know, when I, when I went to Mexico City, uh, the first thing that we did was we had dinner with uh, Hoovy and his wife, you know, my wife and I and stuff like that. And Hoovy, Hoovy's a great guy. And uh, he's not just a, a character out of the ring. He's one in the ring. He's one out of the ring as well. Yeah. And he's a, and he's a uh, banging DJ. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so out of curiosity, by the way, have you ever asked Hoovy about the Jack's prototype that was shown? He doesn't know much about it. He, in fact, this figure here, he didn't even know it existed uh, until about a year ago. Like when I got it and I showed it to him because he was all excited about the um, FTC figure coming mm -hmm. out because he, he knew that the other one had been canceled. There was a belt that uh, WWE released in 2005, 2006. And on the back, you could see like eight figures coming out. There's yeah. a Hoobitude figure. Yep. But then he departed from the company and it never got released. He doesn't know anything about the prototype, where it's at or whatever. Something I did was a friend of mine in Mexico found that figure the other day and I uh, bought it from him. And I told him, instead of mailing it to me, can you mail it to Hoobie? You know, because I nice. believe every wrestler should have their, their figure. Uh, one thing is, um, Sergeant Slaughter told me this last year in Iowa. He said, you know, when you first get in the business, there's that 
fine line you're told not to collect your merchandise, not to take photos, not to do this because it's considered markish. Mm -hmm. However, here you are decades later, you're a father, you're a grandfather, and uh, you'd like to be able to show this stuff to your grandkids and share it with them. And it's not, not just that, but something to pass on. And you don't have any of it because you were told like, you're not a mark and you don't collect your stuff. So the thing with these figures too, is we're seeing a lot of the boys change their mind on it and they're starting to collect them and they're realizing not just monetary value, but for example, if you got a case of figures and you sign them and something happens to you, your family could, you know, sell yeah. them and make some money. Yeah. That, that's something uh, Brian Blair told me was he has a lot of his LJN figures and he signed a bunch of them. So if something happens to him, he, he's told his wife and his, his son, please go ahead and sell it, you know, earn some money off of my name. That way, you know, there's something there for you after. And, you know, nice. well, I, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to, uh, you know, boss, boss fight. Of course, uh, Fanatico's wave one has a old style, like mid nineties, Juventud Guerrera in it. And um, we have plans for, other eras of him, including, you know, modern, late 90s, early 2000s and stuff like where we're going to kind of bounce around with, you know, somebody as well known as Hoovy, uh, we're going to be doing multiple versions for from different er eras of his And he's career. had so many different masks that yeah. you can, you can mm -hmm. switch out the masks and stuff like what you were talking about, you know, you yeah. got the, uh, his his first one, the, uh, the gold and the green one. Yep. Then you can have the, the blue and the white one. The, yeah, the our, our, first, our first version of him is the blue and the white uh, that, you know, with his hair out, like, uh, it's it's very similar to his father's mask, except his hair is out, because Hoovy has that amazing head of hair, like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world from weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. That rounds out the show. Roy, yeah. thank you so much for being on, man. We appreciate it. Uh, we could probably go another two hours with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, feel free. Um, uh, anyone out there, uh, I got a Twitter at Roy Lucier, R-O-Y-L-U-C-I-E-R. Welcome to follow me. I have a collection of going on about 16, 17,000 DVDs from around the world. I'm always uploading onto YouTube, Daily Motion uh interesting clips up on twitter history lessons um i just I, this business has done so much for me as a person you know in, in a lot of ways it's given me life you know it, it, it's been a, a thing of strength over the years when life you know i made some bad mistakes and uh lucha pro wrestling as a whole have, have been there for me and brought me up you know so uh, anything I can do for the business. I can sit here and talk for another couple hours. If needed. Uh, please feel free to have me on as a future guest if you'd like. Um, but no, thanks for having me on. And, uh, you know, please keep up the fandom and um, you, do, you guys are doing a great job. Just so you know, with the uh, the amount of history that you know and have, a lot of the older, you know, before digital and and, you know, all of that now, a lot of the older costumes and everything are very hard for me to find reference on. So uh, you will become my new go-to guy to bother yeah, for things like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roy, you got your Twitter out there. You got everything out there. Your YouTube, what's your YouTube channel? Oh my God. I got multiple ones. Uh, let's, okay. 
here's why I got so many different YouTube channels. See, uh -huh. if I put everything on one channel, let's say a promotion decides to strike me on a couple things, I lose everything. So okay. what I do is I have Roy Lusher AAA, Roy Lusher CMLO, Roy Lusher UWA, Roy Lusher Houston, Roy Lusher Olympic Auditorium, Roy Lusher WWWF, Roy Lusher Wrestling Territories. I got multiple different channels. Just do a YouTube search on Roy Lusher and about 10 of my channels will come up. That's like I said, that's only so if I ever get a strike, it just, it prevents the other videos from getting lost. My daily motions like at about seven, 8,000 videos right now. I've had that going for a good seven, eight years. Uh, so much Japanese stuff, so much Lucha. And I'm uploading on all these daily. Mike Tanay gave me his entire VHS collection and I've been transferring it to DVD. And there's been so much gold on here. So I've been uploading all of that, like old WCW, AAA, CMLL, everything he would tape. So, you know, just look up Roy Lusher on YouTube or Daily Motion and you'll get a hit for sure. Well, we thank you for being on. Eric, you want to get your plugs in? Yeah. Um, you know, first off, Roy, thank you for joining us today. And we'll for sure have you back at some point because this has been a fantastic discussion. Um, and of course, as always, you know, thank you to Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. And um, <laughs> of course, you know, follow him, follow, follow his uh, podcast, The Full Force. And, and a shout out for the Boss Fight Studio team and Legends of Lucha Libre. And you, you can find us at bossfightshop.com. And let's not forget the great Kevin Kleinrock over at Mass yes. Republic. Just about to say that. <laughs> Got to throw Ruben in there too. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to get my plugs in. It's just a fully posable wrestling figure podcast. Me and my brother do a show on wrestling figures. That's about it. That's all we do is wrestling figures. Although we're starting <laughs> to venture over into other lines. We're promoting boss fight over there too. So we, we want to get some eyes over there. So also follow the show lucha central network check out our sponsors lucha masks so eric roy thank you guys eric anything else no nope, just a thank you to you guys and the thank you to anybody listening thank you everyone adios